What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. Today, we've got another live fantasy football mock draft for you back on Fantasy Pros with a 12-team full PPR setup. We've got the 11th pick overall as far as the roster is concerned. Same as usual. One quarterback, two RBs, two wide receivers, a tight end, a flex, and then five bench spots. But with that being said, we can get into this thing. And while we wait, a quick reminder, if you enjoy, hit that like button, subscribe, let us hear it in the comment section. And lastly, Check us out online at alldaypigskin.com. And while you're there, get yourself a copy of the 2021 ADP Fantasy Football Draft Guide. Everything you could want at a great value. Details in the description. But with that being said, let's get into this draft. And quickly taking a look at the draft board itself, you see Christian McCaffrey, Dalvin Cook, Kamara, Aaron Jones, Derek Henry. So I would have somebody like an Ezekiel Elliott in my top five. Uh, I would say that especially in full PPR setups, I do think you can make a case. He has a bit of a higher ceiling than Aaron Jones and Derrick Henry, maybe a higher floor as well. Uh, Then Devontae Adams, the first wide receiver off the board at the 106, Stephon Diggs at the 108, Austin Eckler at the 109, good value for him there. I continue to say it. He should be a first round selection in full PPR setups, no question about it. Then Tyree Kill, the third wide receiver off in the first round. So that leaves us with some interesting decisions to make here. You see Saquon Barkley is still somebody that we can go with. And, you know, maybe here I go with a Saquon Barkley and a Jonathan Taylor, go with that combination. And I've been saying this before, when you go Saquon Barkley early, you should back him up with a safe running back afterwards. So let's go with that and see what happens here. We'll go Saquon Barkley, like I mentioned. And hoping we can get Jonathan Taylor in the second round. To me, that would be, you know, a safe combination. Nick Chubb also falls in that category. And honestly, I'll probably actually go Nick Chubb because I think he's one of the safest running backs. You know, you could argue Jonathan Taylor maybe has a higher upside. But to me, Nick Chubb is in that ultra, ultra safe category. A very run heavy team, a healthy team offensive line is great one of the best in the NFL so I'll go with Nick Chubb here going to give him a bit of a nod over Jonathan Taylor you know it's splitting hairs honestly at this point in time but Barkley and Nick Chubb I think you know you've got your kind of risky guy in one of the selections in Barkley and then you know like I mentioned before you've got Nick Chubb who to me is as safe as they get so I'm happy with that pick but let's take a look at what has taken place here in the second round You see DK Metcalf and Justin Jefferson. So two more wide receivers off the board. There goes Jonathan Taylor afterwards. Travis Kelsey with a sixth pick in the second round, followed by A.J. Brown with a seventh pick in the second round. So nothing too crazy yet. I would say this is pretty typical to be expected. Then a little bit of a run on uh, running backs. Clyde Edwards-Alaire, Joe Mixon. C.D. Lamb makes his way to a second round selection to me. That's still a little bit too early, uh, but... With some of the hype surrounding CeeDee Lamb, I would not be shocked to see something like this happen come your draft day. Uh, But I would say, again, Amari Cooper and CeeDee Lamb, to me, shouldn't be separated by all that much. Notice we can take Amari Cooper here towards the end of the third round, which I would say is pretty, pretty good value. Uh, Najee Harris with the 11th pick in the second round, and then Darren Waller with the last pick in the second. Antonio Gibson falls all the way to the first pick in the third round. That's some pretty good value there. Maybe there's some concerns about J.D. McKissick, but I still don't think he should be falling to the third round, especially in a 12-team league. Then you see George Kittle, Allen Robinson, Keenan Allen, good value on Keenan Allen. Patrick Mahomes, the first quarterback off the board with the fifth pick in the third round. That's kind of the range I expect to see that happen. Uh, Terry McLaurin, DeAndre Swift, Robert Woods, Chris Godwin, and then Chris Carson. So we're in a good position here to take a wide receiver. We've already gone you know, running back. So I'm not all that, you know, desperate at that position here. And if I'm looking wide receiver, Amari Cooper is pretty high on my list. So I'm not going to, you know, debate this one all that much. I like Amari Cooper. I like the upside on that great offense with Dak Prescott. I think, you know, it's a 1A, 1B situation with him and CeeDee Lamb. I get him about a round and a half later. So I'm very happy with that. And the next two picks, they were Kyler Murray and Tyler Lockett. Usually Kyler Murray goes a bit later. So, you know, take that for what it's worth. Uh, and then Tyler Lockett. Now, with Lockett, I would have taken several other wide receivers above him. So, 
you know, I don't mind the way this plays out for us because as far as wide receivers, I like Cooper Cup a lot. I like Deontay Johnson a lot. You know, I like Julio Jones. I'll probably go with Cooper Cup here, though. I really like his upside in that LA offense with Matthew Stafford in town. Similar to an Amari Cooper and CeeDee Lamb, I view Cooper Cup and Robert Woods in that kind of same situation. You know, wherever you draft one, the other should probably follow pretty quickly. 1A, 1B type of uh, you know, situation there with the LA Rams as well. So uh, right out the get-go, we get Cooper Cup and Amari Cooper. I'm pretty happy about that. Then let's see how these next couple of selections play out. I'll touch on some of these players because, you know, it's worth noting. Um, and here, bringing up the draft board after we went Cooper Cup, you see David Montgomery, Miles Sanders, Mike Evans, Julio Jones, Mike Davis with the seventh pick in the fourth round. I would say that is early, earlier than I would like to see Mike Davis go because there's still guys like a Daryl Henderson and a James Robinson. Speaking of Daryl Henderson, he goes here with the 10th pick in the fourth round. I should mention, this is probably now going to be the range Daryl Henderson goes in somewhere in the fourth round because of the Sony Michelle signing uh, or trade, I should say, uh, by the Patriots to the Rams. Now, I'm not demoting Daryl Henderson all that much, maybe like two, three spots. I, I think he still belongs in this range. Does, you know, lower his upside a little bit, but I'm not all that worried about Sony Michelle. I think Daryl Henderson is still by far the running back to own for that Rams backfield. Then we have Deontay Johnson, Adam Thielen. A good value on Deontay Johnson, in my opinion. T. Higgins, Claypool, Juju, Jamar Chase. So a run on wide receivers, which leaves some good value on running backs, and specifically one James Robinson. To me, that is a steal for James Robinson. Obviously, the big news with Robinson is that ETN goes on season-ending IR, which means that, you know, it's a situation where James Robinson's value is going to skyrocket. In fact, I'd be all right having him as a fourth round selection, kind of in that Daryl Henderson, Chris Carson, Miles Gaskin range. And, you know, all of a sudden, the season that James Robinson had last year, very much in play for 2021 as well. So he is somebody that will have his value skyrocket. I would have been very happy to get him in the fifth round. I think he's a high end RB2. Moving on, we've got Josh Allen, Jerry Judy, J.K. Dobbins, Tyler Boyd, and Brenda Ayuk. So we've had some running backs fall here. Um, J.K. Dobbins with the eighth pick in the fifth round would have been pretty crazy value. Uh, so right now we've got a decision to make. Do we go T.J. Hawkinson and then a running back? Because ideally that's the way I would go. Uh, I really, really want to get T.J. Hawkinson here and then hopefully go with the Miles Gaskin. But Obviously, the team after us probably going to go on a running back run as well. I'm going to go TJ Hawkinson. I want to make sure I get him. I like my two running backs the way they are right now. So let's get TJ Hawkinson, see if Miles Gaskin goes off the board. Josh Jacobs and Miles Gaskin, unfortunately, both go off the board. So the gamble doesn't necessarily pay off looking at other running backs that are still available. Kareem Hunt, to me, there's a big drop off. Kareem Hunt, Chase Edmonds, Javante Williams. So looking at our roster, you know, we still need a flex play, so let's see what's available to us. Looking at our cheat sheet here in terms of wide receivers, in terms of options, you know, Odell, Kenny Galladay, Robbie Anderson, not the biggest fan here. You know, we could potentially go with somebody like a, you know, I, I mentioned before, somebody like a Kareem Hunt. We already have Nick Chubb, though. That's the problem here. Uh, quarterback a little bit too early for me because the top guys are all off the board. We could go a little bit crazy here and go double tight end with a TJ Hawkinson and a Kyle Pitts. But again, probably not going to risk it. Instead, I'm just going to go with a bit of a safe wide receiver, uh, somebody that's got some decent upside. I'm going to go with Brendan Cooks here and if again, if Deshaun Watson plays, I think Brendan Cooks is an absolute steal. So we get our flex position taken care of, run on tight ends. So, you know, my one regret is probably should have taken Miles Gaskin first and then TJ Hawkinson, but it's all right. Um, we can, you know, get another running back a little bit later here. Now, again, showing you the draft board. The picks after Brendan Cooks, Kyle Pitts, Mark Andrews are running those tight ends. Dak Prescott, Odell, 
Kareem Hunt. There goes Kareem Hunt with the seventh pick in the sixth round. Cortland Sutton, Corey Davis, Higby, Kenny Galladay, Russell Wilson. Then Damian Harris with the first pick in the seventh round. So Damian Harris is somebody I'm going to boost up here without Sony Michelle. He should get more opportunities. Justin Herbert, Javante Williams. Then a couple more wide receivers and quarterbacks mainly. Michael Gallup, Robbie Anderson, Debo, Rodgers, Will Fuller, Jalen Hurts, Tom Brady. So we've gotten to that range where pretty much everybody but us has a quarterback. So, you know, looking at the available quarterbacks, I really like Matthew Stafford, who's still left on the board, probably going to be one of our next two picks. One of these wide receivers right now, you know, I don't mind Antonio Brown. You guys know that I'm a big fan of his. Running backs here, somebody that I can take a chance on it being full PPR, you know, I can add Chase Edmonds and see what happens there. So that's probably going to be one of our picks here, as I mentioned. So let's go Chase Edmonds as that PPR option. And I think all things considered, probably a good value pick. And then we'll go just get our quarterback, the guy that I have highest remaining on my list, that is Matthew Stafford. So we add him to the squad as well. I've mentioned this before, Matthew Stafford, a late round quarterback that I am very, very happy to land. And these next couple of you know picks here in the following rounds, they have been very tight end heavy. They've been kind of just taking the best player overall. You see Melvin Gordon, Leonard Fournette, Mostert, Michael Carter, Ronald Jones, good value on Ronald Jones. Some wide receivers, guys like Devonta Smith, Marvin Jones, Mooney, Landry, you know, uh, and then in the ninth round, a lot of tight ends, Fant, Goddard, Thomas, Robert Tunyon. So here we're in a pretty good position to, again, take best player overall. I'm looking at these wide receivers. You know, I could potentially stash somebody like a Michael Thomas at this point in time, but I want to continue to just land guys specifically here that I think are very good value picks. One of these individuals will be a Russell Gage, and then I want to go and get Jamal Williams. Jamal Williams is somebody that I really, really like as a late round running back, but let's get Russell Gage first, and then we will land our Jamal Williams afterwards. So there we go. Now we can go with Jamal Williams at running back because the health of DeAndre Swift is kind of up in the air. So very happy to get Jamal Williams here. And then we'll make two final selections and wrap this thing up. Ooh, I was just about to mention Marquez Callaway because Marquez Callaway has kind of set you know, the fantasy world on fire these last few days. If you weren't aware who he is, he's basically the number one wide receiver for the New Orleans Saints. He was a great sleeper pick, but now, you know, he's probably going to be going in the 10th, 11th, maybe even in the ninth round. Uh, if somebody is really, really bullish on him, you know, I don't knock that. If you want to get one of these sleepers a little bit earlier and reach on them, that's okay. Uh, Marquez Callaway definitely would have fallen in that category uh, and was somebody that I was hoping to get with one of my last two picks here doesn't work out, but it's okay. You know, we can take a look at some of these other choices. There's still plenty of sleepers at the wide receiver position. And might I mention, Michael Thomas is still on the board. And yes, he's injured, but I do believe he's going to come back like at the midpoint of the season. And whether it's with the Saints or it's with somebody else, I still think Michael Thomas is a worst case scenario, low end wide receiver one when he returns. So going to invest a pick in him here, uh, get you know, Michael Thomas, a little bit of a luxury pick this late, you know, in the 11th round. I think that's a good selection. Now, looking at who is left on the board, running back, I don't really love anybody in terms of options, you know, potential potential guys that we can handcuff kind of off the board as well. So that leaves us here with some selections at wide receiver, I would say. Again, quarterback, we've already got Matthew Stafford, so I'm not really sweating it. Tight end, we've got TJ Hawkinson. So here, I'm going to go with a guy that I also, again, really like and I think has some really nice high upside this year. That's Amon Ross St. Brown for the Detroit Lions, and that's going to kind of round out our roster. But I'm curious to see what grade we get here and to see whether I agree or not with it. So we get a C-plus grade. A couple things to mention. Obviously, we went Saquon Barkley, Nick Chubb to begin with. And I think we did a good job of limiting risk with those two selections. So I think C plus is a little bit too low. We got Amari Cooper, Cooper Cup, Brendan Cooks, you know, Gage, Jamal Williams. Whenever Michael Thomas comes back, I like that selection. Chase Edmonds is a backup running back there in PPR options. You know, and as much as I don't, you know, think that this is an elite roster, I think we did an all right job. It's a balanced team, one that'll contend. 
Uh, I think it probably deserves like a B minus type of grade, a little bit higher. I really like Matthew Stafford. We've got the connection with him and Cooper Cup as that, you know, uh, kind of stack with the quarterback and wide receiver. And then again, I think we took some good picks afterwards. I really like the upside for Jamal Williams in PPR uh, setups. I'm high on Amon Ross St. Brown kind of breaking out as a rookie. So I'm a little bit higher on this team than the grade suggests. But again, we could have done better, namely taking Miles Gaskin first instead of TJ Hawkinson. But it's all right. We learn from this and we go on. And as always, let us hear it in the comment section. Agree, disagree, along with any other questions you guys might have. Hopefully this was helpful for you all. And if you enjoyed, hit that like button, subscribe. And in the meantime, we'll see you guys in future videos.